What is up Water 8 Warriors and welcome back to another video. Today I have a Christmas present for you in the form of a long flexibility passive stretching routine. This one is all about, yes, improving our flexibility, our range of motion in a passive way, but also just about sitting in some positions and breathing and relaxing, which is what Christmas is all about. As always, the full offline version will be available in the link in the description down below. But otherwise, let's jump into this routine. First of all, I will mention you wanna have a little bit of equipment for you. I'm gonna be needing something like this bolster. You can do this with several cushions. You're probably gonna want some yoga blocks or again, some cushions will do. And finally, in the corner, I have a chair as well, which will come into play in some stretches later on. So let's jump into this routine. So first of all, get yourself into a comfortable position. I'm just gonna be kneeling here because it is easy to demo, but you can do this seated, standing, whatever works for you to begin with until we get into the proper stretches. We're gonna start with a little bit of the neck because that can often get quite tightened and worked up. So we're gonna start with a side neck stretch. So we're gonna place our left arm out towards the side. We're gonna pull the shoulder blade down using the back, so down and back. And we're just gonna to try to lean the head away chin up and then we're going to try and reach away with the hand. What we can do now with our left arm is we can do some twisting motions so we can feel the difference between the stretch because the fascia line goes all the way down into the hand. We might find that if we internally rotate the hands, it gives us a little bit more of a stretch. I pers you know, you can play with all sorts of things. Just kind of feel out where the stretch is. You can play with the neck position as well. We're just going to hold this position for 30 seconds. Again, well, whenever you're doing this movement, you're always reaching that hand down and away from the neck. Make sure you think about lifting the chest up as well. So another five seconds with this side. We're gonna keep our neck bent over. We're just gonna lift our hand up. I'm gonna place it with this V position with our thumb and our finger right on the back of our neck. And we're just gonna try and basically pull our head off the top of our spine. So we're gonna try and sniff opposite armpit and then use this hand to try and pull in that direction. Again, trying to feel like we're gonna pull that shoulder down and you should feel the stretch move in the neck but more towards the center and potentially even going down into the shoulder blades. Again, I'm just gonna hold this one for 30 seconds. Now throughout this routine, just bring awareness to your breath. Try to be somewhat conscious of it when you're in positions. Deep, controlled breathing. So number 10 seconds here. And we're just gonna swap sides. So exactly the same thing again. And shake it off a bit. Same thing, we're gonna reach that right hand out Think about pulling that shoulder blade back, down, and leaning the head away, and then trying to reach away with that hand. Again, you can find that rotation where you feel a good stretch and where the head position you feel a good stretch. If you look more up, it's gonna to transition to the scalenes, a little bit more the front of the neck. If you look down, you're gonna focus more on the traps, stenocleidomastoid, that sort of area. Again, just 30 seconds here. A lot of tension builds up in the next. This is going to be quite a nice one. Yeah. A few seconds. We're going to do the same thing as we did beforehand. So we're going to take that V between the thumb, finger, place it behind the head, just by the ear. And again, we're going to try and sniff that opposite armpit. And we're going to try and pull our head off the top of our spine. Again, think about keeping the spine Shoulder blades down and back. 30 seconds here. Right, that is it. 
just for the neck. You can do a couple of circles just to loosen things up a bit. And then finally, just to finish off, I'm gonna come, you can stay again, standing, seated, whatever you are. We're gonna bring the hands right around to the back of us. We're gonna again, lift the chest up, tuck the chin, and we're gonna try and reach our hands away from us, down and back. So we should feel a little bit of a stretch, probably in the neck and the traps, but also a little bit in the biceps and the chest as well. So again, arch the back, try to feel like you're gonna lift the chest up. Active position, just gonna hold this for about 15 seconds. Couple of breaths. Okay, so from here, you're gonna to need to get yourself into a seated position. I should flip around. And we're just gonna walk our hands back behind us. Slight bend in the elbows. It doesn't need to be too intense, this one. We should just start to feel a stretch in the shoulders and the biceps. What we don't wanna do is let the shoulders round forward. We wanna try and lift the chest up, pin the shoulder blades back, and be proud through the chest. So you feel a stretch through the biceps and through the chest. And we're just gonna hold this for a second here. So in a lot of these stretches today, we're gonna to perform a little bit of PNF. So we're gonna do so on this stretch as well. We're gonna try and basically do a bicep curl in this position. So I'm gonna try and pull my hands towards my hips. I'm gonna hold this for five seconds. So working up to about 50% contraction. Contract, contract, contract. Two, one. Gonna relax. And we're gonna shift all the hips forward to deepen the stretch. Again, make sure you're keeping those shoulders in a good position. We're gonna repeat that another two times. So again, we're gonna do a bicep curl. Try to curl the arms. Make sure you're keeping the chest nice and high. Keep curling. Two and one. And again, relate, breathe out. Shuffle those hips further forward. We're gonna do one last one here. So one bicep curl, five seconds. Five. Four, three, two, one. And again, one last shuffle. Kind of should be close to your maximum now. And then we're just gonna take 15 seconds here, breathing. Getting active with those shoulders. Lifting the chest up. Few seconds more and then we can come out of it shake that one off and then come forward into just an upward dog for about 15 seconds here just kind of moving around from side to side you can move the hips don't need to stay too rigid let's get a bit of a stretch opening up the hips slightly right so we've targeted the neck We've had a look at the bicep as well, the shoulders. We're gonna look now a little bit more at the chest. So the chest can be quite a tight one. This one, I would recommend this one, you're gonna to want to get your chair now. So, let me grab my chair in front of me. So the elevation just means that we can work a little bit deeper into this one. So we're gonna to wanna to be at a kneeling position and with our hand, we're gonna to want to go not vertically, not directly out to the side. We want to take like a kind of, what would that be, 60 degree angle. So kind of roughly in line with the top of your head out sideways. And this one, we can start with either side. I'm going to start with the right side because it's easier just to show you. On the knees, I'm just going to take that hand position. So again, not directly sideways, a little bit upwards. You're going to sink the shoulder down into a point of stretch. And then we're going to apply a little bit of a twist with the assisting arm. So here, you're gonna feel a nice stretch all the way from the pec, probably moving into the bicep as well. Gonna do the same thing, we're gonna do a bit of PNF. So I want you to think about pressing the hand down into the hat, down into the ground, making sure again, not letting the shoulder round over, keeping the shoulder blade back. So we're gonna press about 50% effort for five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. And just breathe out and try to sink a little bit deeper. Gonna do two more of these. So again, press the hand into the chair. One, two, three, four, five. 
And sink down, breathing out. One more. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out, sink deeper. Again, we're just gonna hold this last position for about 15 seconds. Okay, last few seconds. And we're gonna come up and all we're gonna do is we're gonna switch 45 degrees. The other side, again, exactly the same thing. Left arm now, but again, think about that shoulder position. We wanna make sure we're thinking about pulling the shoulder blade into external rotation so we can get more of a stretch over the chest. So again, just gonna come down, sink that shoulder blade down to a point of stretch. And then we're gonna do those PNF reps. So press that hand down into the chair. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna sink down deeper, feel the nice deep stretch over the chest into that. One more. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five. Breathe out, sink deeper. Got one last one here. One, two, three, four, five. And we're just gonna hold this for 15 seconds in that deepest position. Another few seconds now. Ooh. Right, you can shake that one off. Kind of done with opening the chest up. I'm gonna come back into that kind of upward dog position again. Just move around. Just 15 seconds here. We're gonna do one last passive stretch and this time we're gonna look at the posterior shoulder capsule. So this is one of those stretches that for most people I find is needed, but it's not for everyone. So when I get to demoing it, if you find this one really, really easy and it doesn't do anything for you, then I would just skip the video to the time that will be on the screen and then you can move past this drill. But for most people, I think it will be beneficial. So we're gonna perform a sleeper stretch. For this one, you're gonna want some form of pillow or something just to support your head. And we're gonna lie onto our side and our arm's gonna be out directly at 90 degrees. So I wanna make sure that we're on top of our shoulder here. We don't wanna be rolling off and leaning away. Make sure our body is nice and upright. Gonna bend that arm, keep it going out at 90 degrees. Place the other hand on top. I'm just gonna let the arm sink down. Now, if you can go all the way down to the bottom here, probably is not needed for you to do this stretch. So as I said, just move on. If it's tight for you, if it's up here, should feel that stretch around the back of the shoulder. You're probably gonna to need to do this drill. I wouldn't do it particularly hard. We're not putting masses of force down here. I'm gonna place hand on the elbow and then just let the weight of the arm be the stretch. So we're not actually actively pushing down, just gravity is doing its work. So it's gonna hold this position for a minute. Nice and simple. If you want to, you can do some PNF here where you press the arm up into the arm relax and go deeper, but it doesn't always work as well in this position. So I personally find it just works if you just try to think about pushing that hand down a little bit deeper, but just focusing on sitting and relaxing and breathing. So if anyone does handstands out there, or they're working on their bridge, and this one's particularly tight, this can be a limiter for getting properly good overhead position. So it's worth developing. Another 10 seconds here, and then we've done that in a minute, and we're just gonna swap sides. Right, 
that minute is done, just move it back and forth. And then all you're gonna do is roll over. I'm gonna flip myself around and I will tell you when to start, when to stop. You just gotta hold the position. So left arm this time. Again, hand on elbow. Let the weight of the arm do the work here. And just sit and hold it. You may find that one side's tighter than the other. For me, my left is tighter than my right. And that's to do with golf, can be due to do with many reasons. So remember, just sit in and breathe in. Let that hand sink as it wants to, but don't try to force it. Don't push really hard on it. Uh, five seconds. Again, you can move that one. Just shake it off a little bit. Right, we're gonna need that chair back again. So we've opened up the shoulders a bit. We've worked on the sort of bicep, the chest, this sort of aspect. We're now gonna work a little bit on the overhead position. So, gonna get our chair back in. For this one, you're gonna want an object just to separate the hands out slightly than just together. We're gonna to perform a butcher's block position. So, I'm gonna rest those elbows nice and close inside of shoulder width, and we wanna have our hands fixed so they're a little bit wider. We're just gonna shuffle our knees back, and we're gonna sit, sit back into a point of stretch. So we're looking for a deep stretch over the lats, and potentially into the triceps. From here, we want to think about being active. So we don't want to just like sit and arch because that's not necessarily the point of the stretch. We want to make sure that we're kind of flattened out. We're going to perform some PNF again. So we're going to try and press the hand, the elbows down into the ground. So we're going to try and actively pull up. Obviously, we're not going to move. We're going to hold five seconds. We're going to breathe out and we're just going to try and go deeper. So press those elbows down actively. Five seconds. One, two, Three, four, five, and breathe out. Try to sink those shoulders down deeper without excessively arching. Gonna do that again. So press those elbows down. Two, three, four, five. Breathe out, try to sink a bit deeper. Last one here. So press those elbows down. Two, three, four, five. Breathe out, sink deeper. And this is our max point now. We're gonna just hold this for 15 seconds. Again, just keeping that breathing steady. Number five seconds. come back up. Shake that one off, you know, shuffle back, keep the chair there. And now this is the point in which we can extend that back. So we can just sink the hips back. She might need to move a little bit further away and we're just gonna try and arch the body through with now the arms straight overhead. We're just gonna hold this position kind of passively for 30 seconds, looking to watch the back. We'll take nice deep breaths here, but we want to think about trying to expand the rib cage as much as we can. And as we breathe out, we're gonna try and sink a bit deeper. It's got another 15 seconds in this position. And 
We can come out of that stretch. Now you're going to want to move this chair out of the way. And we can come back into that upward dog position. We can just move around a little bit from side to side. Just for another 15 seconds. We're kind of done with the upper body now. We can move on to the lower limb bits and pieces. So I'm just gonna sink back into a child's pose here. Just move around a bit if you want to, but nothing particularly intense. We're gonna do what I like to call the greatest stretch in the world. So for this one, we're just gonna, we're from a seated position. We're gonna take our left leg, we're gonna fold it under, like we're about to cross our legs. But instead of crossing our legs, you're gonna lean onto this left hip, you're gonna pull the right leg over. So kind of twisting ourselves into a pretzel. We're then gonna drop the left leg, the left shoulder even, down towards the ground. We're gonna try and hug our right legs. We're gonna bring our chest towards kind of our shin. You should feel a nice stretch going down the side of the thigh, into the glute, potentially into the bit of the lower back. So this is a posterior hip capsule stretch. We've already had the posterior shoulder capsule stretch. So it's kind of the same thing. We're just gonna sit there for a minute. No PNF, no nothing. Just sit and breathe. The goal is to try and sink that shoulder further down. And just breathe, that's all we don't do. Again, with this one, just like the posterior shoulder capsule, you might find that one side's tighter than the other and feel free to pause the video, spend a little bit more time on that tighter side. Yeah. About 30 seconds. Again, keep trying to drop that shoulder down. Give yourself a nice tight hug towards that leg as well. Yeah. And there's that stretch done. We're gonna go swap sides. So again, come to that seated position. Right leg comes under to the ground, like we're gonna sit in across legs. Left leg comes over, and then we drop the right shoulder and we try to hug that left leg. Again, just gonna sit and breathe now for another minute. Another 20 seconds here. Keep trying to drop that right shoulder down. Hug yourself in nice and tight. And I can shake it off a bit. Right, now we're gonna do some pigeon. So if you cannot do pigeon, which you know, it is kind of an advanced position. Um, that is with the leg straight into this position. We have two options. Number one, you're gonna elevate that front knee. So we're gonna reduce the angle needed for external rotation. That's one way to make this easier. The second option we have is just to sit into a 90-90 and we can do the same position. So find whichever one's good for you. None is better than the other. Whatever is hard for you is the best option. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of elevation at first, just so I can really relax into it, because that's kind of the focus here. So we're gonna go right leg forward into a lunge position. Keep the chest up. Let the knee drop to the side. Make sure you're keeping that front leg at 90 degrees. If you're bringing this in, this is cheating. It's making things easier for you. So 
nice, nice degrees, nice and upright with the chest. And then we're just going to sit in this position for a second. So we're going to try and square the chest. We don't want to just roll forward. This is nothing harder because we want to get a bit of a stretch over this hip flexor of this front leg. So what we can do here is we're going to do three reps of PNF. So the PNF we're going to try and press our knee into the ground and we're also going to try and press this knee into the ground. So we're going to try and pinch the ground. We're actually going to try and lift ourselves up. So we're going to hold five seconds, press into the ground. One, two, three, four, five. And relax. If you're doing this in 90-90, you just want to press just that front leg into the ground. And when we relax, we're going to try and shift a bit deeper. I'm actually just going to move this away and go into a full pigeon position. So again, I'm going to press that into the ground. Press the back leg into the ground. One, two, three, four, five. And try and relax a bit deeper. Last one here. One, two, three, four, five. And just relax. I'm gonna hold this last position just for 15 seconds. Keep holding, keep breathing. Should be kind of a nice stretch in this one. Right into that glute. Another five seconds here. Right. All we're gonna do is swap legs. So we're gonna come into a lunge position. We're gonna take that left leg forward. Again, if you need the 90-90, do the 90-90. If you wanna do with the support, do the support. Get yourself into whatever is comfortable. Again, like everything else, you could might be tighter on one side than the other. But let's just get into that pigeon. And again, same thing here, chest nice and upright. And then we're gonna do those contractions. So you're gonna press the knee and the back leg into the ground. Now hold five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And we're gonna try and breathe out and relax. So in another two now, you press that knee and squeeze. One, two, three, four, five. And try and sink a little bit deeper. Try to feel like you're gonna square those hips up as well. Last one. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna hold this position for 15 seconds. We're now going to shift into some hamstring stuff. Everyone's favorite, or least favorite, depending on how flexible you are. So let's come out of that pigeon position, or 90-90, whatever you are in. We're going to shift to an up, uh, downward dog. And then from here, don't worry too much about the shoulders. Focus more on the lower body. I'm just going to walk from side to side. So I want to feel like a nice extension through the leg, stretching the calf and then back. So we're gonna need 20 in total. So 10 per side, nice and slow and steady. Just really feel this one out. Should feel this work the calf as much as it does the hamstring. And it's also gonna work a little bit of that sciatic nerve as well, because we've got that flexed foot. So keep going. As I said, 20 in total, 10 per side. Get another few here. Right, so we're gonna walk both our hands and our feet towards the middle. So this one is gonna depend a little bit on your flexibility, but we can essentially do the same thing. Even if you're up here or down here, we kind of wanted to be somewhat relaxed. So if you are up here, make sure you have a little bit of support. You can do this in the form of, you know, a yoga block or something. 
All we're going to do is a couple of twists, so just three per side. We're going to twist first of all to the left hand side, as far around as we can, keeping the feet facing forward. You can hold for a few seconds, should feel a bit more of a stretch through the lower back on the right hand side. Come back to the center, twist around to the right. Yeah, and looking for the same thing, a little bit of a stretch into the lower back on the left. And then center, back to the left hand side. Again, doesn't matter if you're up here, down there, just feel that stretch. Center to the right. And we'll still do one more on each side. So to the left hand side. And lastly to the right. Perfect, now you're gonna to come to a seated position and you're gonna to want to have some form of slipperiness with a surface. So the wood floor here is plenty for me, but if you're laminate, you know, socks are laminate, um, getting something plastic onto a carpet, just anything that's gonna let you um, shift when it comes to sliding the legs up. So we're gonna perform what is known as a pike hug slide out. So I'm gonna be in this hug position, and we'll let our legs slide out. But the focus here is we're gonna try and keep that contact between our chest and our legs. We're gonna form a little bit of pin up as well on the way. If this is nice and easy for you, if you can get the way down, we're just gonna move hands over feet and same thing, but you still wanna make sure that you keep that contact between chest and legs. If you're up here and the legs are all the way down there, it's just not quite the same. So, start a little bit of a bent leg position. You can wiggle the hips back, so we're going to try and really pull the hip back into the socket. Feel like we're going to anteriorly tilt our pelvis, sit on the hamstring, sit on the, as opposed to sat back, rounding on the glutes. So nice and tall. Whatever intensity you have, we're going to slide out until we feel a little bit of a stretch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and hamstring curl. So we're going to press those heels down into the ground for five seconds. So press them down. Five, four, three, two, one. Gonna let them slide out a little bit more and they're going to do the same thing again so hamstring curl one two three four five slide them out a little bit more keep that stomach contact one more hamstring curl one two three four five and the last one we're just going to slide as flat as we can I'm just gonna hold this position for 15 seconds. Use our hands to hold, try and keep that stomach and that chest nice and tight. And just breathe. All right, that should be nice and intense enough. I'm just gonna come up into just a tabletop pose, so we're just gonna lift the hips, squeeze the glutes, and kind of just do the opposite to what we're doing, extend a little bit through the back. And then we're actually gonna to come to a standing pike position. So this standing pike position, again, now, we're gonna to need to be at a position in which we can be somewhat supported. So if you need that extra height, that's good. If you're down here, just stay down here. It's nice and simple. We're just gonna do another three PNFs in this hamstring position. What we're gonna try and do is I want you to imagine that you've got something between your bum and you're gonna try and squeeze your cheeks together. So you're gonna try and think about contracting your bum as hard as you can and then that's gonna be our contraction. So three reps of those. So five seconds, try to squeeze your bum as hard as you can, your glutes as hard as you can. Three, two, one. Breathe out and then try to sink a little bit deeper into this. You can use a little bit of assistance if you need to. So same thing again, squeeze your glutes as hard as you can, two, three, four, five, breathe out and try to reach a little bit deeper. One last one, so squeeze your glutes as hard as you can, two, three, four, five, and try to sink down a little bit deeper. We're gonna hold this last one for 10 seconds. All 
or another 10 seconds, should I say, so 15 seconds in total. Ugh. Right, two and one. I'm gonna get into just an upward dog position now. I'm gonna work that opposite range of motion. Right, so the hamstrings should be a reasonable stretch over the hamstrings. We're now going to shift so that we can do a bit of a lunge. We're going to start with the right hand side first. So we're going to place left leg forward. So we're going to be in a lunge position, right hand down, and we're going to twist into that right hand side. So you can let this front leg flare out to the side if you want to. We're just going to focus on trying to get this hip down towards the ground. Again, chest nice and high. I'm just going to sit in this twisted position. It's going to get a bit of a stretch, kind of more into the obliques, more into the QL over the side of the body. It's going to hold this for 30 seconds. You can use the other hand to support if you need to, but you should just be able to kind of sit on that working hand. Again, just sit and breathe here. Getting to the end of the routine now. Well, I say that probably about two thirds of the way through. Another 10 seconds here. This is the end of side one of this record. Please now turn it over for the second side. <laughs> so we're going to stay now on the right hand side still. I'm actually going to switch around so you can see me properly. What we're going to do in a seated position, we're going to take our right leg and we're going to place it behind us. So it's going to be in a bent position. Other leg's going to be out straight. We're going to lean back. So we're actually kind of doing a bent leg hip flexor stretch. I'm not twisting my body straight. I'm gonna keep my body at a slight angle. I'm gonna think about squeezing my glute to try and push my hip in this direction. So. We should feel, in this position, a nice stretch over the quad. And then from here, we can just do a couple of P and F. So make sure you're twisted again, not straight. So we're gonna sort of angled at a diagonal. We're just gonna try and kick into the ground and we're gonna try and sort of actively tense the quad, kick into the ground, push the hips in this direction for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And we'll just relax. So we're gonna do two more of those. So kick into the ground, squeeze the glute. Try to extend maximally through this hip. Two and one. Relax, we're just gonna do one final one. So one of those final kicks. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. We're gonna stay on this right hand side and we're gonna come back up into a lunge position. You're gonna to want to grab, you kind of have two options here, depending on your level of flexibility. I'm gonna do the easier one. I'm gonna grab a chair. So our chair is here to keep us nice and upright. We're essentially gonna try and do the longest lunge that we can do. So we're gonna try and start to extend this leg out as far as we can, but we're gonna use our position here on the chair just to keep us nice and vertical. Because being vertical is the main focus here. So we're gonna try and let that leg shift out. So as far as we can, chest nice and upright. Nice big stretch over the glute. We're gonna try and pin to the floor, so squeeze the legs together. For five seconds, so five, four, three, two, one. And we're just gonna let this front leg shift out as far as feels comfortable. Kind of getting more towards a front slip position. Again, using the chair to remain nice and upright. So again, we're gonna do another squeeze. One, two, three, four, five. Again, let that leg sink out. So, last one here. One, two, three, four, five. Let it sink out as far as we feel comfortable. I'm just gonna hold this final position for 15 seconds. Doesn't need to be a full front split, but we're just looking to get that 
front leg as far out as we can, but keep that chest nice and upright. Just 15 seconds here. seconds come back out of that one I'm gonna repeat that all over again now on the left hand side so I'm gonna move into another lunge position this time I'm gonna go right leg forward and we're just gonna sink down towards that left arm again let that knee slide out we're gonna drop that left hip down as is needed to and we can just chill here for 30 seconds. Noticing that stretch into the lower back. Again, you might find this one especially might be tighter from one side to the other. Feel free to spend that more time on the tighter side. Another sort of five seconds or so here. Come up, I'm gonna stay focusing on that left hand side now. So we're gonna sit back, right leg straight, I'm gonna tuck that left leg kind of behind us. We're gonna lean back into it again at that diagonal angle. So our body is facing away. Try to feel that extension over the hips, so nice stretch in the quad. And then from here, I'm gonna do kick into the ground, squeeze the bum to try and extend the hips. Five seconds, so five. Four, three, two, one. Breathe out. It's a nice stretch, this one. It's kind of a different one. So, again, I'm going to kick, squeeze that glute, kick into the ground. One, two, three, four, five. One last one hit. So kick, one, two, three, four, five. Feel that stretch over the quad. And we're gonna to move to the final one of this sort of triage of hip flexor stretching. And that is the chair supported one. This time we're gonna be right leg forward, left hip back. So grab your chair, get into that long lunge position. So. Nice and upright, right leg sticking out. So again, I'm gonna do that pincering five second motion. So five seconds, you're gonna squeeze the floor as hard as you can, try to bring the legs together. One, two, three, four, five. Just gonna let that front leg slide out a bit. Another two of these. So one, two, three, four, five. Let that front leg slide out. Make sure you keep it nice and upright with the torso. One more. Squeeze. One, two, three, four, five. And slide that leg out. It's gonna hold this final position for 15 seconds. Just keep breathing. Another five seconds. And oh, come out of that one. You can put the chair to the side. And we're coming to the center now. I'm gonna move just to a tailor pose position. So for this, you're gonna want some support for your back. So I'm just gonna use this conveniently placed wall that's behind me. I'm gonna move the feet in so they're comfortable. Further away, the easier this one becomes. Try to sit up nice and tall. And then we're just gonna place some downward pressure onto the knees. So as much as feels comfortable for this one, 
we're going to perform again. Some more pin F. We're going to be holding this one for a total of 60 seconds. So I'll let you, get, come, let you find your position first if you've taken a bit of time to get into this one. We're going to do some squeezes. We're going to try and squeeze our knees up as hard as we can. I'm going to use our forearms just to resist that motion. So we're going to lift. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And try and press them down a bit deeper. So again, two more of these. So lift as hard as you can into those hands. Two, three, four, five. Breathe out, try to push those knees deeper. Gonna do one last one. Lift, two, three, four, five. And then I'm just gonna sit in this position for the remainder of the minute, so about 20 seconds or so. Just breathe in. You can think about trying to use the glutes to pull the knees down towards the ground as well. That's quite a good contraction. Another five seconds here. Perfect. Oh. Right, we can shake this one off a little bit with some hip swivels. So just letting the legs drop from side to side. I'm gonna wrap up with the last few stretches. So first one, we're gonna remain, we're gonna go from that tailor pose position. We're gonna place our left leg out straight and we're just gonna rotate round towards that left leg, trying to get our shoulder inside of the leg. Now, if this one is a little bit hard, we can just bend the knee slightly and that's gonna reduce the amount of stretch we need on the hamstring. So, get into a comfortable position for you. Use your left hand to grab hold of that right knee and really twist yourself around into it. But again, we're just gonna try and think about getting that shoulder down towards the, the knee. So, try and twist around, chest nice and open. Should feel a nice stretch over the lower back into the QL. Just gonna hold this position for 30 seconds. Nice deep breaths in this one. Really try to fit, breathe into where you're feeling that stretch. It's another five seconds or so. Come back up, shake off, we're gonna swap sides. So bring that left leg in, right leg goes straight. Now again, you know, if you need to, you need the same position with the leg bent, it's way, way easier than straight. But straight is obviously better. Again, try to get that nice shoulder low towards that knee. Use the hand to pull and push, chest nice and open, a whole 30 seconds. Another five seconds here. All right, so stretch a little bit of the QL, loosen that up as well during the front split work. Just to get a few hip swivels, just to move things about. We're actually gonna jump into some pancake work now. So this one is where it's gonna vary hugely. So, you know, ideally we're gonna be doing this on the floor as long as we can get over to about a 60 degree position. If you can't get over to that, just start elevating the hips until you can. So either on some pillows or as high as the chair if you need to, and even bending the knees just slightly so you can get more of that tilt, more of that rotation round. So get yourself set up to a level where you can get your torso to at least kind of a 60 degree, ideally more like a 45 degree angle so we can get gravity working in our favor. So we're gonna come forward into that position. 
whether that's racks down on the arms or not. We're gonna do, we're gonna drive for the PNF, our heels down to the ground and also slightly inwards. Hold for five seconds as hard as you can, almost like you're gonna try and stand up out of this. And then we relax deeper, repeat for three times. So come down to a moderate stretch. Feel however you are sat up, elevated on the floor. And then we're gonna try and do that contraction. So 50% effort, maybe a little bit more. Really squeeze the floor. Five, four, three, two, one. Breathe out and sink deeper. You're looking for each time you do that PNF, whatever stretch we're doing, you're trying to sink that much deeper. So again, let's squeeze the floor. Five, four, three, two, one. Now sink deeper into the stretch. One last one here. So squeeze, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna relax into our deepest position. You can use hands on the feet or hands on an anchor in front of you to pull yourself deeper into this one. We're just gonna hold for 15 seconds longer. Another five seconds. And we can come out of that one and shake it off. We're gonna finish now just with sort of a couple of minutes in a nice relaxed stretch. One of my favorite stretches actually just to finish off the day and that is a hero's pose. Now the hero's pose in full is a kneeling position and we just lie all the way back. I personally find that a little bit too intense, so I like to support my hips, and I also like to support my back. So this is where I'm gonna bring the trusty chair back into the equation. The edge of a sofa also works really, really well. A Little bit of elevation for the hips. So I'm in kind of a comfortable position, and then I can lie back onto that chair. So the chair is gonna be placed right around the top of my thoracic spine, and I can just lean back into that position. So. I'll let you guys get set up. And I'd recommend holding this one for a good couple of minutes. You can place even some supports underneath, like a couple of cushions here underneath your shins if you get too much of a stretch. This one you can kind of just mod out to support your body in whatever way that you have a reasonable stretch over like the quads, over the hip flex, over the core, over the chest as well when you lean back, but it's not so intense that you can't sit there for a sufficient period of time. So hopefully you have that all set up. I'm gonna stop rambling. So lean back. I'm just gonna hold this position for, for the, as long as it feels good, really. There's no right or wrong here. So that has been a minute. Feel free to continue holding this stretch, as I said, as long as you want to. But that is basically the routine. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this routine. Nice, long, relaxed sort of flexibility, passive style, PNF as well being used. So it's kind of still effective for developing flexibility, but it's not so intense that it's as much of a workout, something you can chuck in at the evening. I used to do this pretty much every single day, this sort of rough routine uh, for a long time. And now it's the sort of thing that I'll go to the gym and do on rest days as well. If you did enjoy this video, 
make sure you hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. It does really help and I do highly appreciate it. If you don't wanna miss out on any more future videos, also hit that subscribe button. Join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe as we're now on our way to one million, which is completely mind blowing. But other than that, I hope you have a great Christmas. Take some time to chill out, spend some time with family and forget all the other nonsense that's going on in the world. Have a strong week and 